In this lecture, we're going to talk about SWIG. Uh, SWIG is an ac acronym for uh, Simplified Wrapper and Interface Generator. It's a piece of software that is used to translate C and C++ files uh, into scripting languages or, or other languages, um, or I should say the ability to call C and C++ files or programs or libraries uh, into other languages. And so here's a, a partial list of the languages that it supports. Of course, in, in our use, we're going to be using it to wrap Python or to create wrappers for Python that we can use uh, in Python. But there's uh, many other ones. TCL and Perl are scripting languages. Java is a, 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 a runtime engine programming language. Ruby is a scripting language. PHP is a, you know, basically a, a web language. R is a statistical language, um, and Octave is a MATLAB clone. So uh, we can generate uh, automatically wrappers uh, for all these languages and several more using SWIG. And again, in kind of the, the, the way that we've presented the material in this course, we're going to go for kind of uh, breadth, not depth. I'm going to show you a couple examples of how you would uh, create uh, use SWIG to create a couple of wrappers for some simple files, but SWIG is very, very powerful and there's just no way we can cover it in a, in a lecture or two, so I'll refer you to the web documentation for it uh, for an extensive review. So <clears throat> if we have a very simple file, we can just use the header file itself. Um, you know, if you're familiar with C or C++, you typically have header files uh, where your function templates reside. And so if you have, this is the same uh, Fibonacci sequence file uh, from the C types lecture. Basically, we're just, I'm sorry, I said Fibonacci sequence. I meant Fibonacci number. But we're going to use this uh, function here. So this were in the C file. And then we had the uh, function prototype in a header file. We can just issue these commands here uh, to, to wrap the header file itself and, um, and then use that, it'll, it'll automatically generate uh, a Python wrapper, and then we can use that to call from within Python. So let's switch over to the terminal window for a second and go through an example. Uh, so uh, I have the, the Fibonacci, uh, the C code that has the Fibonacci number in it, uh, we'll need to go ahead and modify it. You see there's no header file right now. Uh, this is from the, the previous C types lecture, so we're just going to modify this to include a header file and then put the function prototype in the header file and so now you see that I have a, a, the original C file and I just moved the, the prototype or the template uh, over to the header file. So now we can just run swig so we're going to issue the command swig uh, we're going to tell it we want to wrap we want to wrap it into Python. Uh, we're going to give the Python module a name in this case fib, and then just the, the header file there. And if you see what it created, it created a, two additional files. Uh, one is a fib.py, which is the, the Python uh, wrapper module file, and then also a C a C function file that that wraps. Uh, that provides the, the interface between the C program and Python. So if you want to take a look at what that is, um, you can see this is uh, quite complex, but this is all that was generated automatically by SWIG. So then we can just simply uh, compile that. We're going to uh, compile it uh, using a little optimization. Okay, so uh, I should have actually uh, added an additional include statement uh, that points to the to the include files, uh, the header files from Python. So on Shamu, that's in share apps uh, Python 273 uh, include Python. Okay, so that's where we want to also have the compiler look for header files and. There's a few uh, warnings there, but those aren't critical, so we're just going to move on. Um, 
So now that we've done that, we can actually compile our shared object. So uh, in this case, we're going to compile the object files and send them to an output called fib.so. Okay. So now you can see there's our, um, if you just look at the files associated with the, the fib, then we, um, we've created a couple of new files there, but, but the one that matters uh, is, is the shared object file there, okay, and, and the Python file. So now if we want to use this, we can, uh, we can go right into uh, IPython, and now we'll just say import fib. And then we just say fib fib 10, for instance. And I don't recall what uh, what the exact timing was from the C types, but I would suspect that this is uh, uh, less. I'm not positive, but uh, because it's a little more efficient wrapper in the Swig interface, as I understand it, okay, or in my experience. So anyway. If we go back over here, um, we can show how you might wrap a little bit uh, more complex function, and this time we'll want to wrap uh, our total function using the NumPy array. So again, we're just going to move a, move the prototype, the function prototype, to a header file, and uh, here's the uh, exact same total calculation from uh, the, the C types lecture. Uh, but now we have this additional uh, interface file here, and what we what we we do here we have to include this uh, numpy dot uh, i file, and you know I'm not going to get into the syntax here. I'm going to direct you to the documentation about uh, you know the specifics of what we're doing here. But basically, this is a little bit more complex, and what it allows us to do is, of course. Our uh, total function takes uh, as a, the, the first argument an, an array, and as a second argument the length of that array. But uh, NumPy, of course, the NumPy data structures know their lengths, and so we can actually uh, use this kind of added sophistication to uh, say that whenever we have a function that takes a double x and an int n, then we want to use the NumPy array n, and then the first dimension of that array. Uh, is the length, and this is a, a shorter interface uh, such that we don't need to specify the length. It also allows us to basically uh, do conversion from other types of data into NumPy arrays on the fly, and that's included in this numpy.i, all the um, sophistication for that. So as an example, let's go back to the terminal window, and this time let's look at uh, the files associated with total. So let's remove that one for now. And uh, so now here's the three files. Uh, they're exactly what they are in the slide, so I'm not going to show them to you. But uh, basically, we're going to go through the same process. We'll run swig, Python. Uh, this time, we don't need to specify a module name because it's in the, uh, it's actually in the interface file. Uh, but we'll run swig on the interface file itself. Again, we get a couple of warnings. They're not critical. Um, and so now we're ready to, to compile this. Uh, so in this case, we need to have include directories that point to the original Python header files, but then also some header files associated with NumPy. And the statement's kind of long, so I'm just going to actually go back. I've done this before. So I'm going to go back into my history and find it. Um, and uh, what it looks like there is uh, 2579. So I'll just run this 2579. again. Uh, the actual command is there, uh, gcc-fpig-o2-c for compile um, all of the files that, that have total.c, so that's total.c and total underscore wrap.c. Uh, then the include files uh, that point to the Python directory and then the ones that are associated with NumPy. And so um, if we look again at the files associated with total, uh, you see that totalwrap.c and total.python were created when we ran swig. Uh, the total.o and totalwrap.o were created when we compiled it with GCC. And so now all we need to do is create this shared object file using uh, 
the, ob the objects here. We're going to give it an output name of total.so. Okay? And so now if we look at the files associated with that, then we have the one shared object file, okay? And the Python file. So now if we go into Python, then we can uh, import total give a x of a value. Now if you remember from C types I had to make this a NumPy array. It's actually not necessary here. Um, I can just simply make it a regular array and it'll do the conversion for me. Uh, so there's the total and um, just for show let's see the time here. and let's compare that with NumPy's sum feature. Well, I need to import NumPy. And we want to time that. So you can see in this case, uh, which is different from C types, the implementation here actually produces a faster call. Uh, so um, even though I guess SWIG is probably a little bit more complicated to use than C-Type, it generally will generate faster code. So uh, if you recall from our lecture on C-Types, when we were calling into the total library, we actually, the, the overhead of the, of the call was, was actually causing us to be slower than NumPy itself. Uh, here we can see that it's actually uh, faster, quite a bit faster. So uh, SWIG is a very useful tool. The nice thing about it is once we have our interface files uh, as we need them, it takes very little modification to generate wrappers for, say, Python, for TCL, um, for, for a different language. So uh, it's a very efficient way if you have uh, you know, C or C++ code that you like to convert and call from some scripting language.